for a second shot this Thursday. Anyway, I think we're on. Oh, we're on now. Hello. Uh, good evening. Um, welcome to Tomorrow Tonight. Uh, I'm John from Broadsheet, and we're honoured to be joined by Derek Mooney, Public Affairs Consultant, uh, Fianna Foyle, er, uh, uh, erstwhile estranged. Uh, good evening, Derek. Good estranged. evening, how are you? Yeah. Very estranged. <laughs> um, how are things, Derek? Not bad at all. I have no reason to complain. Um, kind of slowly getting the idea that we might be I might be vaccinated sometime soon. Well, soonish. Soonish, you got the word, did you? Oh no, 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 no! But just in terms of that, that it is actually speeding up. And if they're going to, uh, just when you see the when you like when you see them kind of inviting people sixty-five to sixty to start or sixty or about sixty-nine to sixty-five, you're kind of saying, okay, fair enough, but we can't be too far off. So <laughs> it's getting warm. It's getting yeah, kind of the drums up, the bombs are dropping closer. So yeah. And uh, how's your mum in Spain? Grant, no problem at all. I think she gets a second shot this week on Thursday, as far as I remember. Um, so that's good. And again, which is that they've again, which I think I've made the point before, the region she's in, it's been consistently low. Um, so kind of you can get out and about. Um, they've got a fairly decent vaccination regime there um, in that region. So I think the R rate is quite low. It's one of the lowest regions in Spain. So they're yeah. slowly getting back to normal. Again, it's kind of a level three, level two type stuff. But, sure. Um, plenty of vitamin D, though. Plenty of vitamin D. You're outdoors. You're dining outdoors. Um, so stuff like that. So you kind of wonder, like, how long is it going to take for some kind of operation here that people can actually do things outdoors? Um, so we'll say maybe, maybe, maybe May. Who knows? And... Um... Do you have do you zoom with your mum or Skype? No, uh, no, no, um, no, no. Um, I would call, uh, 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 she's kind of getting the hang of WhatsApp and uh, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, but most of the time it's just easy to ring the landline no. <laughs> because uh, she, again, yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's just easier to go with. So we'll be like, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I tried to I've been trying to do a Zoom for the last three days with my own mum and. Uh, we had we had mastered Skype, but then Skype. Yeah. What happened? Skype. It's just kind of gone. Went. I'm not, sure. I'm not too sure. I, I think it might still exist. I can't remember. I know it was subsumed into one of them, but I can never remember which it was subsumed into. I think Skype might have ended up with um, Microsoft Meets or something like that, isn't it? Or what do you call it? I can always, I always get which one just. So just Google. Can't remember. I can never remember which. One. It's a Microsoft uh, Teams. I think it might have been subsumed. Into oh yeah, yeah. Is that what you you use that for work? No, 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 no. What I use for work is Zoom primarily, and uh, sometimes Google Meet. Right, right. But pr primarily Zoom, primarily Zoom. Okay, um, you had a column in today. Uh, very I, good column, excellent. Uh, we we will we go to that after the papers, or we yeah, just... whatever Sandy's. Yeah, that's no problem. Sure. Yeah. Okay, my Wi-Fi is a little bit slow, or my broadband is a little bit slow, so no just in in sharing the screen, just be a little bit patient with me if you yeah. can, Derek. Okay, well, quite a, an amazing story on the cover of the Examiner. Um, have you have you seen that, Derek? The fishing this, story. The fishing, yeah. This is an extraordinary one. It seems like which is they're saying that because of some orders and some irregularities. Now, I just wondered, was this? Um, I'm not too sure where, where exactly they're pointing the finger. Are they, are they pointing the finger at the state, or is it, is it that particular, the industry itself, or is it something? It, it, it's a hard one to call. It's, um, um, but it's clearly the things is, that, the, yeah. The commission has issued a ruling withdrawing a special derogation to the state to weigh fish at factories. So we can't weigh our fish anymore because... Um, a damning audit that highlighted manipulation in, in, the, in the yeah what they're saying is that that, that, that there was a derogation that, that the state could weigh fish at the factories instead of at the the, 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 the ski side um and they're saying but whatever that's they're saying there's some manipulation to catch they're just saying look and uh, reporting the size of catches um so look we'll see yeah uh, it will be an extremely complicated situation i mean in fairness the fishing industry took a long time to get that change to the the, the actual uh at the factories at the processing centres rather than at the key side. Um, because just well no one there are so many key sides with just the complicated complication of it, etc. Okay. So it would be a big loss if they were to lose it. But um 
Yeah. It just it strikes me as there are many problems in the European fishing industry. This doesn't appear to be a massive one. Is this Brexit related? I mean, uh, is this I don't think so. No, no. I mean, the, the, I mean, the Brexit complicates the fishing in terms of where boats can land, can land and where they can drop catches, etc. And um, particularly up around the Piccadilly Bay, around the north coast, there's this, um, because they're right on the border of there, literally. Um, but no, I, I think I think this is just again, which is just what the it, like it seems to be based more on an audit. Um, so uh, yeah. you know, whether whether this is just a one off or it's something that they've caught, etc. I mean, it just seems to be a hell of a punishment to meet out to everyone, unless they can actually show that it's industry wide. And I don't think they've determined that. I think they just said, "Look, we found this again," which is. Let's see how this plays out. I would imagine. Sure. sure. Yeah. The department will be would, will not be would not be keen to see this played out. No, uh, the atmosphere, the EU Ireland atmosphere is pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm not too sure that I'm not too sure. I'd, I'd say that it's cool. I think there is there is some stuff, and we've seen. And I, I I don't think I've written about it here. I know if I've done some stuff elsewhere about in terms of data protection, and particularly the data protection commissioner. And as far as I know, the Justice Committee, uh, James Lawless's Justice Committee this week, maybe this week or next week, is meeting with the Data Protection Commissioner because there's a, there's been kind of one of the things like the gen general data protection regulation, it's created what they call the one stop shop model. So you went to the country where, you went to the Data Protection Authority, you wanted to lodge a complaint of the company where they were, so they're headquartered one. So for Ireland has been is a data protection authority for Facebook, Google. LinkedIn and a whole range of other Twitter and other kind of data. And there's been an attempt by Germans, Dutch, um, Italians, etc., to kind of encroach on that and to try and to be to kind of to, to say, well, look, the Irish Data Protection Authority doesn't take this seriously enough or isn't speedy enough or doesn't move quickly enough against these companies. So therefore, you should lodge your complaint with us, which is completely knocking out the, the whole one stop shop uh, mechanism. Okay, um, and it just appears to be. I, I think that, that that's something we need to watch out for. I, I, a couple of years ago, I think it was a fair criticism to say that the data protection authority wasn't properly staffed or manned, didn't have the rough resources. That, in fairness, has changed in the last three to four years. Um, so I just think there's a bit, there's a little bit of change in pushing this the wrong way. And the same applies with under like we see. I think what'll be a big issue in the next couple of months is on corporation tax with the Biden proposal. Yeah, but what about uh, also the uh, just uh, just more topical the mandatory hotel quarantine the European Commission came well, out. Well, there isn't. But happens to that? I mean, it, 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 it has existed elsewhere it, it, in terms of how it's handled and how it's rolled out. And I think that I think it's I think the issue for Europe is going to be well, guys. First and foremost, this is a stopgap. This is we know kind of where this ends. We know that this goes up till wherever June, July, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, well, guys, well, how do you intend to manage it between now and then? How do you intend this kind of jumping up and down? Yeah. There seems to be a kind of, I think Europe is saying, well, look, guys, what are the rules on this? What are the criteria? Why are, yeah. why was Austria in it first, then isn't in it? And why is this in it and not yeah. in it? And I think it's more so kind of, listen, what's the fair uh, application of this? Who came also, who came the, also, the this? Advanced, oh. also the advanced time warning, which is, well... Derek, um, who, came, who came up with... Who, sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt you there, but who came yeah. up with MHQ... Who came up with the quarantine? Well, I mean, I think it's been, in, it's been in existence in Australia and New Zealand. Along. It's been used in a lot of other countries. So no, I know, but who brought it in, who brought it into Ireland? Uh, well, it was proposed as far as I know. It was proposed by the government. It doesn't come from anywhere else. I think, I think the proposal initially comes from methods through the Department of Health. It wasn't a, like, was it a Donnelly idea? Was it a... Um, a Best of my knowledge, Harris? it was an effort. Best of my knowledge, it was an effort. I mean, okay. I mean, everything's, well, I mean, everything becomes a Harris idea at some point. So I mean, yeah. Yeah, um, we, we get well, well, like, I'm sure. Like I'm sure on TikTok or Instagram, he said this months ago. We just we didn't pay attention. This is, um, this is a, I mean, it, it is. We, 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 it was really really bizarre because it's a solo run by Ireland. No, it's not a solo run by Ireland. I mean that, that you you've had in you've Europe. Had, well, no, you've had borders closed off Europe across the race before. You, you've had a whole range of different things. This. The mandatory oh, we're talking about World War II. <laughs> no, it's not like World War II. Again, again, I mean, are we talking about World War II? I, I don't, uh, but yeah. there's nowhere else in Europe who are doing, who have this, this detention. Yeah, but there's nowhere else in Europe that, that, that's, that's surrounded by water. There's nowhere else in Europe where the entry point is an airport. If you go to any other point in Europe, the entry point is a border, is a road. Yeah. So but there's a reason why you do, why Mandry Hospital, hospital uh, Mandry Hospital, Mandry Hotel quarantine would become a different issue here. Because for us, with the exception, yeah. well, when you do have ports and we do have stuff coming in and we do have, most of that 
is containerized. Most of that are no, but uh, Derek, very physically, simple. you know, physically we are an island. I get you, but yeah, we're not technically, not by oh no, no, technically we are physically well, and we technically can, we, we are an island. We can come in. Yeah, I can but, guarantee you, there's a map to show us. There's actually no, no, but I mean, in terms of uh, logistics, getting into Ireland uh, through Belfast, you know, you're not going in. It's no, no, the, but that's but that's covered by the common travel area. But that's why we accept, we accepted that it was going to have to be a two island. Yeah, uh, but does that make the quarantine a little bit uh, moot in terms of you can get through? Oh no, but, but look, I mean, I've argued. But first and foremost, I believe that I believe the mandatory uh, hotel quarantine should have come in late last year. But this is the argument I made last July, August. Shouldn't they have cleared it with the the EU first? Well, you're not to clear to the EU because you do have these derogations in terms of health emergency, public health, etc. You do actually have you you do have the authority to go and do certain things. Now, should have been handled maybe better. No question doubt about that. Should have been. Should have, I mean? Well, who, who I don't, don't, so wait, wait, just, the could, wait, wait, could we just deal with one Dirk. question at a time? What we had is a couple okay. of weeks ago, we've had we had Fianna Fáil and TDs and Fianna Gael TDs knocking seven bells out of each other. And the only thing they agreed on was this wasn't planned well in advance. I think they're absolutely right. I think from that point of view, they're absolutely right. Dirk. But I think I think the problem is this should have been planned last September, October. This should have been done last August, November. Oh, Dirk. sorry, uh, July, you August. Derek, you're, you're a really <laughs> fine supporter of the Defence Forces in Ireland. Uh, you've yeah. written extensively yeah. on their conditions. Soldiers have to greet American tourists off the planes, escort them to a hotel for detention. If they want to go out for a smoke or anything, they're they're barred from leaving their the corridors of their hotels. No, they, they, I don't. I don't think there are. They, they, there's limits away where they can go, etc. I mean, but I mean, I don't think they're, they're not barred whole, towards the, cor- the corridors. Do you think that's what the Irish Army should be used for? No, I don't believe anything. So I, I believe it should have been a private security firm. That was what was originally suggested. My understanding. Um, but we, but what's happened is, I mean, look, this is where, by the way, the other piece I'd written was, is, look, in terms of, I think the Defence Forces have proven that they have, that for an organisation that actually has been severely stripped of resources over the last decade, that has been severely curtailed, that has been severely restricted, is actually when the state actually has no other resources, it immediately turns to Defence Forces, and the Defence Forces have yet to be found wanting. Defence Forces have filled every gap, but I don't think they should have been put into that position. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, there was a whole range of ways, but this, this should have been better planned. It should have been planned for much further back. It should have been an operation for much longer. The whole, pur- the primary purpose of mandatory hotel quarantining is to discourage unnecessary travel. It narrows down what is essential travel. There isn't a great deal of business travel. Yeah, but, told. Most companies yeah. are saying to people, we don't you, want you traveling because we can't take the responsibility for it. So it, just was, apply and it, should, have, it should have implied that much, much further back. Yeah, there is that. And then... They, they they didn't clear it with the EU. I mean, I, I know you're saying that they didn't have to. You don't have to clear it with the EU. Just as a courtesy to say, look, you know, we're going to have soldiers meeting. Well, no, well, first European... of all, the, 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 whether you use the army or not is not a European matter. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a typical matter. But in terms of saying, look, but there needed to be clarity about the criteria. There needed to be clarity about this is where. And, like, and to a certain degree, they set that out. But then when you saw the lists, you're going to go, well, how does this list sit with your criteria? How does that list sit? At what point are you taking the yard number? At what point are you doing this? At what point are you doing that? Israel was on it. Then Israel was off it. And nobody understand the, the, the rationale. I mean, Israel was on it for a week and it was off it the week after that. And nothing had actually changed. If anything, we, I mean, Israel well, was uh, vaccinating uh, miles ahead of everyone. I think a man had taken a case to the high court. And they, it, it, but yeah, but Israel was off on the Friday before he took the case, as far as I know. I think it was. A, 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 by, by the way, he said he was still in applied because he came in at the time when it's still there. Yeah, but it wasn't right. because he took the case. It was, I, th- I think, again, which is just I, my understanding was Israel is on it because Palestine was on it. Okay, but in terms of diplomatic gaffes, uh, you had the whole diplomatic corps effectively, the European uh, yeah. ambassadors and embassies mm-hmm. kicking up a stink. Yeah. I mean, it didn't get a lot of coverage, frankly, in relation to the level of, of the. Of, you know, the magnitude know. I mean, of the I mean, story I, mean, I felt, you know. It but. is. Well, I mean, the, the, the concern wasn't quite right. I don't totally perfectly understand it, which is like, how is this going to affect our community here? Why can't they return home? Yeah. But that's not essential travel, folks. This is the whole point about it is to curtail essential travel. Okay. And that's it. And it is, it is okay, a difficult you, situation. I mean, yeah, it, I, Derek, I, I, like yeah. there's certain things that like we have to keep, like the, our tourism industry is our yeah. only, you know, yeah. uh, in many ways, it's you know. It's, oh no, no, that we like. I mean, what we've done to the airports, what we've done to the rest. I mean, I, I again, I would argue that we should have done this much further back, and we would have been in a far better situation than we are now. We could have, we we should have actually started this process. We would have established this. We would have known what the rules were coming into Ireland. 
you would have been able to maintain that. I mean, there's a whole range of things that were done the, badly okay. over January, February. There were people the coming in. A, the, the airport the was a swinging back door. Yeah, but the policy then when they implemented it a few weeks ago, yeah. it meant everybody, even if you'd been vaccinated, even if you had negative, even if... Yeah, but there's an issue about that, which is the issue that because there is no international... For example, I think I think I mentioned this before, which is I've got very good friends who live on the French-Belgian border. Um, they live on the French side, but most of the business they transact is in, is in Belgium and most of their, and most of their, business, most of their activities are in, in Brussels. So they're nice. required to go up and down to Brussels every two weeks. Both of them are fully vaccinated and have been vaccinated for several weeks. But under their existing rules, they still require a PCR test anytime they travel to Brussels. Now, they're both vaccinated, both vaccines, but you're still required to have a PCR test. Why? Because Belgian police only recognise the PCR test when they're stopping on the road. They don't, they don't know what the French... Uh, vaccine certificate looks like, etc. But they recognise what the PCR is doing. There is a lot of this until such time as we get a common, agreed standard about what, and and pro- preferably this green uh, uh, passport or whatever they're going to call it, or this app that shows. So therefore, people arriving in a Dublin airport say, "I'm vaccinated." We'll prove it. Well, then I just produce a piece of paper to produce a card. But well, how's anyone to know if that's the genuine article, not the genuine article? There's a trade. It'll end up in a trade, in fake documents and the rest. So. I accept it by the same. It makes no sense. I totally accept it makes no sense. Somebody's coming in fully vaccinated with a PCR test and so on, but you still have to, you still have to quarantine. I think, I think PCR tests on a more regular basis would have been a better way to work it. I think I described some time ago before late last year, there was a situation where I know people who are going to the Middle East. And in terms of what you did is you arrived, you had a PCR test, you had to wear a, a bracelet that could track you, that it was, um, what do you call it? Uh, so, uh, GPS. GPS controlled. And that what you do is then you had to take another PCR test two days later. If that PCR test was positive, then they were brought in, you were put into quarantining, and they tracked all your movements back. Now, you wouldn't get away with that here on the GDPR, so that wouldn't work. But I think we could have been far more creative about this. Therefore, I think the pre-planning on this was bad. I think this was a reaction to, my God, you haven't done anything. I think the problem with this is this is something that should have been sorted out last September, October. It should have been rolled out in a slow basis. Yeah. It should have been brought in gradually. Yeah. I actually and, thought the heat had come out of the, the issue. Yeah. And But we should have been, I believe we should have done PCR tests in the airport months back. I mean, I mean, we should have been having antigen are, testing in the airport. Like Iceland, Germany, the rest, with the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in Germany, across Iceland, the rest of, there was PCR and other testing in last, since last June. And we were sitting there with photocopy sheets of paper been handed up to passport control. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, the, the, uh, there's a picture of a lemur. It's not, you probably can't get the, the full effect. It's, oh, I can I can see the eyes, yeah, but yeah. Photo. Um, yeah. Uh, maternity hospitals can look at easy. And yeah, again, which is, again, again, which is, this is a whole range of things, which is, like, which is the number of people who've kind of, who've, uh, fathers, etc., who haven't been able to see the kid or hold the kid. Um, I mean, it's just, it, again, it's just for the, it comes back down to the pure humanity of this thing. Um, and again, which is we looked over the last couple of weeks, of people been able to go back into nursing homes and see family and see uh, uh, family. Um, it, it, it's it, it it just brings home just how bad this has been for the last year, just how difficult this has been on everyone, and just how and how human it is. Just the, the, the absence of contact, the absence of yeah. intimacy, the rest of it. Just I mean, I mean that in every possible sense of the word. It just it's just yeah yeah. It's uh, and if there if there is a whatever fifth wave or whatever the i mean yeah you know it is this is the whole point which is like i'm sure there will be something i've no doubt in terms of look the longer people are the longer this disease is going around the more chance there are of variants now not every variant is horrendous now i know that they, the indian variant is now the really big concern given just how absolutely rampant this appears to be in the in india um so i mean there are still concerns but not every not every variant is worse. Not every variant is more contagious. Not every variant is 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 is, is means it's been the end. And again, which is, is now look at particularly the nature of the vaccines, which is these can be modified. So it looks more than likely we're going to be getting another vaccine shot before the end of the year or early next year. Yeah. Does this you know, none of this makes you feel you know. I mean, you're 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 fully accepting the narrative. I mean, the the official. Well, narrative. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be fully. No, I mean, I'm not. I'm not do I accept that COVID is a disease? Is a is a is an infection that affects uh, affects people badly? Yeah. Does it affect everyone badly? No. Do ninety something percent of people recover from it? Yes. Is there such a thing as long COVID? Yes. No, no. You do, you do you feel that this is just dispor- disproportionate? All the all the all the the last twelve months. 
Um, parts of it I do. Parts of it I do. Parts of it I do because I think there were decisions, but there were bad decisions made at some very various points. Um, look, and do, you, and do you think that 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 is just kind of you know making it up as they go along, kind of incompetence, or you don't see? You don't I don't see... think it's incompetence. I think I think the problem is that you are trying to catch up. I mean, look, what's the last real experience of this? That be it the Hong Kong flu, the avian flu in the fifties and sixties, not really the same thing. No. You need to go back to that, and I know the Spanish flu is not exactly the same thing. But if you look at how many people got wiped out in the Spanish flu and it came in wave and wave and wave and it ended up in Australia and ended up here then the rest of it after the First World War. I think there is, I think, I think abundance of caution has been the watchword, but I think at sometimes the abundance of caution has been overly abundant. I think that has been a great certain degree of over caution. I think people do, do deserve to be able to make a little bit more personal choice. But I think personal choice that doesn't affect others, not personal choice that kind of just could, could let it go rampant. So I, do, I think there's a, there has been a wee bit too much. I certainly, I think the, the current lockdown here has gone on too long and too deep. Yeah. And, and I think people have been slowly Pretty unlocking deep, themselves. I think that I thought there was an interesting stuff there, Andressa, which is 50% of people kind of accept that they have broken the rules in some big shape or form because the rules didn't reflect people's normal lives, everyday lives. I mean, the five kilometre thing was, if you lived in certain areas, you can, tell you, you can stay in your county or travel, five, you can fi travel five kilometres, but must stay within your county. For a lot of people who are living in border towns or living in county towns, where the nearest town to them, or count areas where the nearest town to them was a kilometre away, but there's nothing four kilometres the other way, of course they're going to go into the local town. So there's lots of stuff around that. So the, yeah, the, the illogicality of a lot of it. There was a lot of this. A lot of these were rules for the sake of rules, which were, were the, the, the rules were not there because and people, people were starting to no, to no longer see the connection between the rule and public health. Um, of, I, um, think, I think Netflix has been... Um, excessive and very on a couple of occasions um but doc that's it i mean but i mean i think the government should have um had a greater wider consultation that the actual process that, would, I, my, that was the understanding last year that nepot would report to a cabinet not a cabinet subcommittee but there would be a grouping of cabinet uh, secretary generals etc and that they would take that and then give a proposal to government that so seemed to well, martin would have appointed nepot wouldn't he Oh no no, Nefitz Nefitz exists as a subcommittee. Is, is is a thing within the Department of Health. It's a standing group. It's a standing body. It's existed. Standing group. It's, right. it's existed for years. Yeah. And who appoints them? Um, it's a civil service appointment. It's, 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 it's like if the chief medical officer sits on us, she would then have group. Of, I mean, they are experts. But, but, experts but the Taoiseach would, would have no specific. say over who's appointed or anything like no, that. That's my knowledge. No. Minister of Health. No. No. Um, I think I think the cabinet has to sign off on them, but I think these are, these come through an appointment, public appointment service. I don't think it's. Like you're not sitting down and saying, Jesus, lads, who's how Camazon was this last week? I might know something about who, who I've seen it with a syringe. Grant, he's the very man for me. Yeah, I don't think that's. Um, I just got the uh, the Irish Sun. I just want to. Uh, oh, excellent. I'm going to put it into the into the uh, onto the into the yeah. post as such. Yeah. <laughs> so forgive me for just one second. No problem at all. Um, yeah. It's. It, it, I think Mondays are very particularly difficult during these lockdowns. It's, uh, you know, they are. And, and again, but I, I, what I do feel, which is why I'm saying I actually do feel a little bit better. I do kind of feel a little bit more upbeat than maybe I would have maybe six, seven weeks ago, because I do feel the end is in sight. I do feel May is not too far off. I do feel that we'll be able to mix good people. Um, maybe it's also just the days are getting a little bit longer, a little bit brighter. Um, yeah. I have been out and about a lot more than I would have been. Have you? Yeah, good. Good. Um, no, I, I, like I haven't been living here like a hermit, and like I've worked at home. I've worked from home for twenty something years. Right. So that I, I'm quite well used to that. Um, yeah. But what's but what's really been kind of not been able to go out and meet people for a coffee and go and have a chat or not. And most of what I do is kind of gossiping and making up stuff. So I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's desperately difficult. So I, didn't I meant to it. ask you, uh, the, did you see the Terry Prone story about uh, her? Did you see? You didn't see it on, the, on Sunday. What did I see? I saw something on Twitter. They got an FOI and her correspondence. Oh, her correspondence. Oh, her notes back to uh, the minister. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Thought, but you do that kind of work, so I mean, uh, I have. I haven't. Like, yeah. I haven't done that in a while now. The rest was saying, but yeah, you yeah, know, that's it. And you, you do go back, and that's kind of what my piece is about today. Which is, look, for God's sake, lads, would you just keep it simple? Um, and it, it, it is, and it, you look around, particularly if you see politicians in the UK. Less so in the continent because because I'm not speaking all the lingo with the rest of us. Like I don't know whether fellas in Belgium are speaking in perfect jargon or they're making the plane talk all the time. 
but certainly you, you kind of get a sense of people who really have an ability to communicate in people's own language. And I, I mean, I, I, I've said this many times, I think Nicola Sturgeon is streets ahead of most other politicians on these two islands. Um, and I just think in terms of her ability just to communicate with people in their own language, not talking down, not being oversimplifying, yeah. but just using plain language, yeah. avoiding jargon, avoiding civil service speak. You don't think Mary Lou or um, Catherine Murphy would have that? Um, to a certain degree, but, not, but but by the way, by we are talking about leaders doing it rather than just politicians doing it. Yeah, fairness, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different right. message you're conveying. Um, I think Mary, Mary Lou, strange enough, no, I think there's something about Mary Lou's tends to actually, I, th- I think, I think, um, it's scripted, I think, Gona, it, I think yeah. Gona Bryn is better. I think Pierce Doherty is a lot, lot better. Yeah. Um, I think Mary Lou's there's something about the way she speaks and that, 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 that is a bit, no, it's a little bit, it's, it's a tad cliche, but it's her own, they're not cliches and proper, proper, and proper they're just, right. there's a certain uh, vernacular to it, et cetera, a certain yeah. vocabulary to it that I think it is a little off-putting. Um, just oh, never seen her in the door. Catherine Murphy, I think. Catherine Murphy, I do agree with you. Is actually is, is, is very, very good. The problem is she doesn't get an awful lot of airtime. And when it is, it tends to be critical. And so therefore, yeah. you can't put it in the same uh, category as Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola yeah. Sturgeon has the benefit of being, of being a first minister, of being in that leadership role. So it, 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 it's, it, it's not comparing like with like. And, it's, and that's not being no. compared to Catherine no. Murphy. No, and uh, I wouldn't say so. Captain Murphy is very polished or anything, and that, that is in fact no. But she has she actually has a nice turn of phrase. And beautiful has been quality. I think she can. I think she can actually get. I, her great capacity is to get to the point very quickly. To, is she doesn't dress it up. She gets very quickly to the nub of an issue. Gets very quickly to the core of an issue. In to his credit, so does Alan Kelly. But Alan just seems to do it in a way that. But, Maybe people have decided, have made up their minds about him from his time as minister or something like that, but it's just, I think there's been yeah. a couple of moments in the doll. I think Alan Kelly has been exceptionally good, and I think he's been far better than Mary Lou in getting to the point. Yeah, but he does, he's very hammy, and it's sort of like, you know, he, he and he sounds like the guy who's going to nick your lunch, your school, your lunch money. Yeah, there's a I No, think, yeah. I mean, he does, basically. You know, the, the one, uh, him and Donnelly, it, it, it was like, <laughs> you know, the the kid from Black Rock down in Don Leary again is you know getting the, yeah, the head kick. It's Grace Johnson fairness, but yeah, no, no, I, I get that, and I think like I think Ali, I think Ali Kelly has again, which is yeah, people, people have made up their minds about him possibly from his time as minister when he was kind of very much like uh, say that once more and I'll block you. Um, it was it was right. <laughs> okay, well, I was I was just sort of suggesting like to, to yeah. just from his demeanor and everything, it's very. Uh, yeah, no, but I, but I think in terms the of wartime thing, general, I think is the phrase, isn't it? Rather yeah, but he's but he is. I agree with you. Maybe I I think maybe he does tend to have one tone or one volume, etc. He hasn't been able to kind of to dial it down um, a lot. But I think he's quite good at getting to the point. That was my more so. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was most my point, which is he has been in terms of kind of encapsulating an issue. More so, where Mary Lou tends to roll on and tends to. There are so many prepositional phrases in anything from Mary Lou. By oh, the time yeah. you get to the point. <laughs> she scored about four, 14 or 15 other minor or irrelevant points yeah. that are kind of Sinn Féin talking points. They go, no, can we just drop them out? Yeah. Because that's addressing an audience already convinced. Get to the get your core point. Uh, yeah. And I think Pierce Doherty has been better at doing that. I think Ono Brain tends to be better at doing that. And I think actually somebody who I've actually kind of changed my mind about is Louise O'Reilly, um, who I think actually has become far more concise than she would have been before, and particularly on television, and particularly on some of the late night talk shows, and she's yeah. actually quite good. She gets yeah. to the point quite quickly. I think that just you just wish people. I'm here, am I rabbiting on and kind of not getting to the point? So yeah, well, I, and again with Louise O'Reilly, she's very much a kind of a, a like a, a natural, like a human being rather than no, that's exactly which it, it is, and it's relatable and it, it is understandable. I think um, uh, like uh, um, uh, South Downs with uh, um, Holly Cairns and Jennifer Whitmore and. Who have that? Who genuinely have that quality? Although I do think that they're the sometimes on the on the on the COVID thing have been. I, yes and no. I I I'm not fully. I I I'm not fully get it. I, I think there's a certain degree of. Um, they're, they're, they're good communicators. I'm not denying that. Um, uh, not just, I'm not, I think I think there's a certain degree which they're kind of speaking to. The, the choir to a small degree, yeah. Right, like um, virtue signaling and, and kind of... A little bit, a yeah. little bit. There's a tad of that. Tad the of latest that. thing they'll latch on to, yeah. 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 I, I sense that as well. It's sort of a, 
kind of narcissism a bit. I mean, oh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too, I'm not too sure to go that far with you, but there is a, there's a certain degree in which is it's it's feeding a beast that's already fairly well fed. Uh, yeah. Um, so just uh, sorry. Um, I should get plenty. I should get some reactions on Twitter anyway. Forgive me, uh, Derek. I'm a little bit cranky today. <laughs> Today I didn't notice, but everyone. Oh, it's good. good. <laughs> Sorry if I was getting a bit. It's, a, it's a relative thing. It's a purely relative thing. Um, <laughs> Paxmanian. Um, okay, this is the. The song, yeah. It's horrible. Uh, uh, death in uh, Dublin. Um, oh yeah, this yeah. Yeah. Uh, chap uh, charged. Yeah. Um, uh, rest, uh, Two hundred sixty-six homes in St. Kevin's. This is a. Uh, uh, hospital in Cork. Um, uh, it's going to be a lot of social housing. I was just reading that earlier. Um, the Irish world, Bernard Purcell's <laughs> Irish health experts advise COVID advice put England and Scotland on red list. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> this kind of puts an end to that. Then. Like, what's becoming what's become an issue, which might actually address this, is in terms of what what the UK is going to do about India, in terms of its context there. I think I think Boris Johnson has now had to cancel a trip to India. Because the um, the infection rate has now begun, and particularly the Indian variant has now become so high, so I think that could become an issue. Um, I, I think I'm not sure you need to put England and Scotland on the red list. I think you could just you could just put you could put India mm -hmm. on that, but we'll we'll have to see. Um, well, I'm I'm a, I'm not racist, but I, I I'm not really a fan, a great fan of the, the Welsh. <laughs> I had a oh, why, why are you leaving out the Welsh? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, a, a miserable year there. Um, but we join Commonwealth as goodwill gesture. Uh, yeah. <laughs> God bless Nick. God bless Nick. I see, yeah, that's a kind of Jim McCullum hadn't done this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Kind of Gail have been desperate to get on there and kind of do something similar. Um, yeah, that's right. It's a digital, which is, it, 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 by the way, it, it, it's, by the way, this is, this is admirable. This is grand. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Um, and I think, and I, I, I and Again, it shows how close you again is, Fianna Fáil are. It shows how close you are as parties. Uh, I wouldn't have thought so, but however, we'll let that one, we'll let that one slide through. Um, what it, 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 it is, but this is the difficult, which is like, I think there was St I, Stephen Collins a couple of weeks ago had this piece saying, God, people have to stop talking about the United Ireland down here, which is very much reflecting the Michal Martin line. Stop talking about the United Ireland. Stop talking about the border polls. Stop talking about referendums. Stop all of this talk. Because it's only it's only upsetting unionists that they're already getting agitated. And mm. I go, no, no, look, that's not agitating them. What's agitating them is the UK. What's agitating them is the United Kingdom coming apart. And if we don't start planning for what happens if the United Kingdom comes apart, we're going to have a big problem. Now, whether the Commonwealth is an issue, I think everything should be on the table. I think I have no problem with that on the table. Personally, I wouldn't be opting for it, but that's so be it. Um, so but I think I think the more willingness there is to talk about it and i think there's a lot of you there are a lot of unionists who are maybe not dup who are maybe not uup who maybe voted dup a couple of years ago and now voting for alliance who are willing to listen they're not going to engage necessarily they aren't going to be convinced by it but they're willing to listen and i think there is a kind of saying look guys the nature of the relationships on this island these these two islands is going to tr change dramatically as a result of brexit maybe the uk doesn't come apart maybe scotland decides to vote to stay and the UK, as Cow, as um, uh, I got the yeah. words, Mark Drakeford has said a couple of weeks ago, maybe the UK find, finds a new way of coming together. Maybe the UK finds a new way. Don't see much sign of it out of Boris Johnson, but maybe it does find a new way of holding itself together. Yeah. In which point, in which point the, the Northern Ireland's relationship within the United Kingdom would change. Something's going to change. That's the whole point. There is something going to change. And the union is sitting there saying, no, it's not going to change. Ain't getting anyone anywhere. And us refusing to say anything because we're afraid that unions will become upset by us. You're going to go, well, guys, yeah. This yeah. Is, that's why I use the line thing, but it's by King Canute. The tide is coming in. No matter yeah. how much we don't talk about it, it's still coming in. But not upsetting the unionists has been a, our policy, hasn't it, for certain? It years. has been, but the unionists, it's not, unionism is not a one big house anymore. It's, 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 no. And by the way, it never really was. No. Um, but unionism is in a very difficult place. And I know that, yeah. I think that we have to recognise. And there's a very because few David Irvine. It's feeling very, very threatened. It's feeling very much under attack because the, the place to which it declares its great fidelity and loyalty and its allegiance is basically saying, we're not interested anymore. And the people who are the Conservative Unionist Party, um, as I referenced last week in a piece, Nick Cohn has been writing about this like kind of for years. Kind of said, this, this is not the first time the Conservatives have done it to them, but it's the first time they've done it so blatantly. Yeah. And basically screwed them over. Um, 
And that's not difficult. That's not that's not easy. And I, I agree, which is like we don't want to be put rubbing salt into the wounds. But guys, if something's gonna ha- if something's gonna happen in change changing the nature relationship, that's gonna have a knock-on effect here. And we're gonna have to prepare ourselves for it. Does it mean Eunice is coming five years, 10 years time? Not necessarily. But things are happening and then we've got to start having these conversations. And we need to start with look, if this were to happen, well, how would you accommodate? How would you do with it? Mm-hmm. Well, Scotland- and it's strange enough, which, which is people are saying, oh, we should we sit down and talk to you about this. You're just kind of saying, listen, yeah, but give us a sense of what you're thinking about. Give us a sense of what you're talking about. Then they'll come in and negotiate us, but they want to see yeah, what, so what, what the, the ballpark is. Yeah. yeah, They'll see what's happened in Scotland. Uh, oh, I think, I think what's happened in Scotland big. is enormous. And yeah. when you have Mark Drakeford basically saying the United Kingdom isn't working anymore, the Welsh First Minister, notwithstanding your own prejudice against the Welsh, yeah. I mean, that's going to, like, that means something, which is Wales has never been particularly, I mean, while there is applied Cymru movement in Wales, it's never really been that strong, not nowhere no. compared to the SNP. No. They but when you see the Welsh Labour Party kind of saying, look, there's, there's a movement here. Yeah. yeah um, <coughs> I don't get me started on the bloody Welsh. No, I was, I was trying to there, though, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> if only I had some daffodils, and I, I forgot to bring them up and then. Um, and th- this is a. Do you remember um, things can only get better? Oh yeah, dream, dream. Yeah, dream. Yeah. Uh, he has found himself to be the living proof of the song's message. This is a great news story. It, things did only get better, he said, since yeah. the song. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to imagine to hear that song without thinking of Tony Blair. I know it's amazing, isn't it? It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, as I found a bizarre thing. I just started. Um, I think uh, Alistair Campbell does some stuff. Does a podcast or a. If they do cast on YouTube with GQ, and he's just listening to a couple of his interviews in the last couple of weeks. Oh yeah, no, she's not bad at all. Are they not? So, no. Yeah, yeah. I used to he read. Has a, he has a reasonable self awareness. Yeah. He does a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we got that thing uh, in Dublin when he was? There was some journal media awards, and no. he played the bagpipes at it. No, I missed that one. No, no, no. That's I do. I do know he's very fond. He played the bagpipes. I think at Charles Kennedy's funeral as well. Oh, yeah. he, was major, he was a big major. He was a big. He was a good personal friend of Charles Kennedy, because, and t- they had talked through. Yeah. Like, as we know now, Kennedy had uh, various issues and this, or but apparently had confided in. Right. In, yeah, uh, that, Ball, yeah. Breakdown, yeah. yeah. Uh, but God, he plays the. He plays it for an hour or something. <laughs> it was. <laughs> People were walking out. It was like, you know, he. Well, that, but that, that, was, that, that was the old definition of a gentleman, of somebody who knows how to play the banjo but doesn't. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It was, but it was sort of, wow, you're, yeah. you're kind of aggressive on a bagpipe. It's, you know, you're you're over overweening and. But that's <laughs> just again was that that Billy Connolly won the rest of which is the bagpipe. Like, why the Irish never went to war because we have the yellow pipe strapped to your knee and you can't really play them going into battle. <laughs> or the spoons. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a, good, a nice picture uh, from, I think, uh, London J. Uh, oh, yeah. It is indeed, yep. Um, are you a, a, a football fan? No, that's again. It was like, no, but I haven't. I have had to listen to all my mates today having a small meltdown over this European Super League. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how have you, have you been comforting them? Uh, uh, no, it doesn't break my heart laughing. Um, but um, <laughs> no, it, 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 it just, I actually, strange enough, I actually kind of do get it, um, which is what you're saying. I mean, I don't know whether this is the kind of the final Americanization of football, which is like you had over the last couple of decades or so, you had a lot of American uh, sports families and sports companies buying into English soccer teams, then plus the Russians and God only knows what else. Um, and you're thinking, okay, is that the next stage of it? Which is, but what it brings at home is it, it, it's a strange point, which is that. We kind of see Manchester United and all the, and the big the big clubs. I mean, presume like they are big big businesses. But you forget that these are big businesses rooted in communities, rooted in areas, and that the actual geographic and visit kind of the look the local loyalty to the team. And these teams came from nowhere. These teams remember somebody going through the names of where these eventually come from, etc., and where, where they come back from, yeah. where, they, where their original origins are. So and okay, you've got the Celtic, the Celtic and Rangers in Glasgow, which comes from very very clear areas. But other ones have invested, and you forget that these come from communities. These come, these were, and then it's only was 50, 60 years when players were only getting a little bit above the average industrial working wage and the rest of it. So, Sir Stanley Matthews, or maybe not Sir, but he wasn't, but Sir Stanley Matthews. But Stanley Matthews played and lived on the same streets where the miners lived and all the rest of it. Yeah. I was listening to a fantastic thing there about Bill Shankly. 
couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm. and again, which is he he was a minor. He had played from various clubs, etc. And for most of his playing career, he lived on the same streets where the fellows who came in to watch him were. So they had a slightly better income, mm. but not hugely so. Yeah. And you forget the origins of this, and which is therefore these clubs mean something. We might see them as distant. Oh, yeah. and, oh no, no. And, and I think from that view, I can actually understand the pain of that. I actually, came for all my slag it off of fellas today, oh, I yeah. can actually understand the pain of that. I can understand that disconnect. I can understand that fear of losing. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you- you go to New York, uh, Brooklyn, particularly. You know, the, the Dodgers left Brooklyn. Yeah, that's Brooklyn, actually right? that was which is when that was that there was a yeah the yeah when, when they and never were forgiven for that kind of no thing. and but also it really tore the heart out of you know you talk yeah. to older people there and you know it, it just ripped the heart out of it but but I think. Uh, I hate to say it, it was inevitable, though, wasn't it, really? I mean, it, I'm sure there is, because they have become such conglomerates. They have become such massive yeah. business interests, the rest of it. Um, and they don't really need, like, you can see it from the stands being empty. They don't, you know, I, I always assumed, oh, they, they need that kind of gate money, but they don't yeah. really, it's really... No, no, that, that, that. it is about television, it is about rights, you know, it is about... In fact, the fans are kind of like... Yeah. We prefer these carbon cutouts, in fact. You know? Yeah, it, that is a scary part, which is, um, I, I again, which is, I, I, I don't know what, but I've been to, like, I used to go to Chicago every, every, se- every second year or so. Right. And I know nothing about baseball. To this day, I know nothing yeah, about baseball. Yeah. But if I go to Chicago, I want to go to Wrigley Field. Yeah. Because the atmosphere in Wrigley Field is just electric. And it is, like, it is the team that's cursed. It's not, hasn't won a damn thing, God knows how many years. There's a yeah. massive reaction around it. Yeah. There's a massive atmosphere. There's a brilliant There's so many thing. other things going on. You, might, you don't even have yeah. to watch the team. You know, it's Although not, that was an amazing you're, thing. You're, that I said, apart from the fact that whatever way they designed the seats, they're not built for the wider man. Um, <laughs> dear. It was, no, they didn't. I mean, it was just, it's like, And for, for 60 something, yeah, that's what I was shocked at. I mean, thinking, mm. they clearly built these things in the 1930s when fellas were still starving because they weren't building them. <laughs> now, the fellas of my size are paying 120, 130 quid dollars for the seats and they're going up. And the rest was like, I was only paying me 40, 50 dollars. Yeah. Red and tapas here, electric. And I still have no clue what I was doing watching. I still don't know what I was watching. It was funny being around a lot of people drinking, but there was none of the. Yeah. It never got kind of, you know. No, it didn't. It was very relaxed. And it was families. It was genuine groups of people, et cetera. And it was large groups. It was great. I have to say, now, I, I went out with a couple of mates and I just had a brilliant time and totally oblivious to what I was watching. And, uh, well, the New York Yankees have a kind of a, uh, they're twinned with Manchester United. So it's all yeah. part of that kind of global. Um, yeah. Prince joins us, joins the backlash of a football Super League. Uh, yeah, this I thought he was dead. The, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, anyway, yeah. This is apparently Mars. Yeah. <laughs> the independent oh uh i might check on the the verdict on the um derek the chauvin, chauvin trial yeah uh, i think it's coming in but the jury are out anyway now so yeah uh, minister vows to stop super football super league i don't this think this would be can. interesting i mean this this is a wee bit of a, a mindful of lbj which is like lbj's great line was which is never tell a man to go to hell unless you can send them there it's one thing saying I'm going to stop the European Super League. It's another thing stopping it. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Are you do read? Um, are you reading Robert Dalek's, uh I have. I no. I, I don't have. I, I oh god, which ones do I have? Jesus, they're inside in the other. They're inside in the. But are you, the are you a Dalek aficionado? I do. Actually, do like Robert Dalek. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but, but it was. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. They, they, the guy. She used to work for. She's a. She's the other great presidential biographer. She's still alive. Um, oh, Doris Good, Kearns Goodwin. Doris Kearns Goodwin. Yeah, because her husband had been the speechwriter to uh, Kennedy, and I think then briefly. But she actually worked for Johnson. So yeah. Her stuff yeah. on Johnson is actually told very personally because she did. She worked from. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, she did. Uh, she did team of rivals. Is it? Yeah, she's done a good. She's done, she's done a good few. She's done, she, she's done one recent. I think her last one was about two years ago, three years ago, which is looking at the kind of the present kind of great moments of crisis and presidents. So she looks at Lincoln and Kennedy right. and others. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, number ten joins the tax. So it's a populist. I mean, the, the it is. And, uh, but again, which is I mean, again, which is I mean, it's only maybe just uh, kind of. Um, Pointing up their their, 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 their their limitations. Well, here's the thing: the, this is kind of it. You get a feeling because even the FA Cup has dim, diminished in the last yeah. thirty years to, to very little now. I mean, I don't even yeah. know who. No, I get it. Which is now. Yeah, you know, I did. I did. And um, when when I, a couple of times I went to, to London when I was a kid, 
Um, I had, I was going to say an uncle, it wasn't, it was actually my mother's uncle who was originally from Tipperary, but he lived in, they lived in London and he was in, like just Chelsea mad, just lunatic for Chelsea. Yeah. Therefore, I don't even remember being brought to Chelsea. There was, it's a really, yeah, 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 but that, in the late sixties, yeah. Okay, that was there. That was a period as well, wasn't yeah, it? It was a Peter Osgood and very Osgood, and Osgood and... yeah, yeah. That, that, but I mean, it was, but that, my my uncle was my my great uncle had he had a season tickets and all the rest of it, but it was it was stands and it was fairly. Um, Spartan, but was passionate for Chelsea. Just passionate. You couldn't understand why anyone would support anyone else. Hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm just sort of seeing if there's a. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, can you see that? No. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay, oh, yeah, we'll end a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is poor L. Keir Starmer been thrown out of the pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was really the man. He was a Labour voter, apparently. He really went for it, didn't he? he just... Yeah, and I did actually, I, I, amazingly, I heard about it and I read about it, but I actually hadn't actually played the clip. Um, oh, he yeah, yeah. yeah. really goes for it. Like it, it's, he's well used to kicking people out. <laughs> yeah, no, but you can actually see it there. I mean, he's a fairly wild. Now, it's kind of a damn situation with the. <laughs> Keir Starmer's uh, police bodyguards are holding back the landlord in his own pub and mm-hmm. he orders him out. It just appears. It's a, it's what was awesome. he doing in the pub? Did, did he, was, he... he was over canvassing. The, the local elections are on the UK and he was canvassing. There's a mayoral candidate in... Where was he? Was he in Bristol today? I can't actually remember where the pub was. I think it's Bristol. Yeah. Um, so he was canvassing with the local mayoral candidate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God, that's a... And a Labour voter too. You never go along. This is quite interesting. The... Uh, yeah. Photographs of the owners. Yeah, I think it's pointedly non-English. I see Abramovich um, over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was like f- foreigners took over our clubs, and then. Well, there you go. So much for Brexit taking back in control. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they, they certainly realise it's a big bad world out there. Oh, God. Uh, something to do with Europe. <laughs> they, they 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 could net two hundred to three hundred million welcome bonus. Yeah. It's. Uh, and this is a tragic death. I'm not sure if you're... Oh, my God. I didn't see that. Uh, no, actually, yeah. It's very That's sad. Jesus, yeah. Lovely, uh, lovely face, lovely smile on her. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, can we have our football back, please, mister? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but this is definitely a fool's day for the red tops. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's Twitter. I uh, just want to put call up your... Um, no big secret to government, good government communications. Tell us what 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 that was all about, Derek. Basically, what it is is it's kind of what we put into is which is like, I, I, what's good, good 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 government communications is about getting the message, resolving it down, staying consistent, keeping it short, keeping it in plain language, and staying staying to the message and giving people a time to absorb the message, giving time people time, and not changing changing it. So. And what I'm saying is that particularly last weekend, the, you had the Irish Times story about um, we're going to move to 18 to 30 year olds being vaccinated next. Now, there may be some logic to that. I'm not I'm not just, I'm not saying that, but you don't announce it to the newspapers before you've said it to your cabinet colleagues. Before said yeah. You don't do it two weeks after you've said, no, no, we have to stick with this age profile because that's why we're not honoring our commitment to the special the, the SNAs and the teachers. Um, that's why we're not doing guard the that's why we're not doing shop work because you don't chop and change it and then expect people just to go along with that it's it's creating yeah. it's unnecessary and i just felt from that point of view it's going to say look can we just go back to basics this is not that complicated it's not that difficult it is complicated though derek isn't it when you've got like all these fiefdoms you know it's only is surrounded by whatever these uh... no and unfortunately what, what you've had there is kind of is that there, you, when you don't have the government singing from the same hymn sheet when you have a whole range of that and i go into that point which is and when you then have his two immediate predecessors acting as a greek chorus in the background mm-hmm wearing masks and announcing happiness. I mean, like Simon Harris is on today telling us like it's all going to be sweet it's all going to be sweetness and light and we'll all be out of this next May. Yeah, he's gone TikTok and yeah. Oh my God. And, 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 but Grant, I mean, Simon Harris has learned how to man- manage this, but he also must remember that he's also a minister. He's a member. There is a collective responsibility. He sits at cabinet. I mean, last week he came on and said, well, I was opposed to the mandatory quarantining. We should have never done the two vaccines. 
well, what a pity he wasn't there at cabinet saying this to a, a week before that. That would have been far why, more beneficial. Why isn't Martin coming down heavily on these guys? Because and, they're not his people. This is the problem when you have this. Donnelly's not his people, you know. I mean, well, Donnelly's, no, they, but Donnelly's his people and the rest of it. But I mean, they, what you have is this is this is I look. This is why I fundamentally oppose this government. This is why I fundamentally oppose the program for government, because I don't believe you can work this way. You can't have rotating teach because you can't have rotating teach when we have going to be there for two and a half years, and we know his end point. We know the end the point. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, he's not counting the days. To, by, yeah. by, by definition, isn't he a dead duck? Yeah, you know he, I mean? that's the problem. And, and that's it. And you can smell the hoisin and the, and the pancakes sizzling in the background. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, that's the problem. And, and that's the difficult. He also, he has no control over the people on the Fine Gael side. And he's like, and why no. he, you know. No. And it's clear that Faradkar is playing a game. And it's clear that Harris is playing a game. And, we clear, and it's clear, by yeah. the way, that there's trouble within Fine Gael. Harris is positioning himself for whatever happens to Faradkar when the guards um, go through the phone and whatever the DPP decides to do. Yeah. So there's all kinds of political games played out here. And it doesn't appear to be an ability to pull the 15 into the room and say, for the love of God, guys, we only need to hold this together for a certain period of time more. Can we just control this message? We have, um, and, but you just have the whole thing. And Harris is kind of saying, well, I don't need the government communications. I have my audience of, of 220,000 here. Yeah. 80,000 on TikTok and yeah, yeah. whatever number thousand there is. Yeah. So that's yeah. a very difficult thing. So therefore his fiefdom is not his power base. It's his access. It's his number of people on social media. It's his social yes. media reach. Yeah. And Michael so Martin is very much... Communications. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Martin is very much pre-internet, isn't he? In, 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 in oh, no, he, I mean, again, which is he's an analog thinking. teacher. He's an analog teacher. Kind of digital analog age. teacher, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. and it's, it's but it's, he's... Which is that story that's been told about, like when he goes out and takes the phone call from Bonda Lane, and yes, I, she's, she's told me something I can't tell you because you have to leak it. And Baradkar says, oh, you mean about the extra 500,000 vaccines? We all know about that. You go, I mean, it's as if Michal is a bit of a lamb to the slaughter there, which is that yeah. everyone knows what's going on by him. Right. Um, so it, it, it's that difficulty. Um, he's waiting for tomorrow's newspapers, probably. You know, yeah. to... <clears throat> and every day they come out, they, 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 it's a kind of another wallop. But it is those difficulties. So, yeah, but, yeah. But, but even when they do talk, I mean, they make it so complicated. Stephen Donnelly still makes these things quite complicated. Very, right? very. Yeah. And Michael, Michael Martin, his his last couple of statements as Taoiseach, I just think he's got the tone wrong in terms of when he goes out and announces those they kind of the step down. I think his last one, he got the tone wrong. Um, and... It's you not thought it was bad. too gloomy to... I think it was a bit too gloomy. I think it yeah. was kind of still a bit, hey, you must remember this. Don't forget that. You must... Yeah, finger-wagging nanny. Yeah, it yeah. was a little bit, yeah. yeah. And I think it, I think, I think he just, he just he, he's lost. And he's lost the room, but I don't think he's getting it back. Right. I just don't think he's getting it back. And I don't think... And people are saying, okay, if the vaccine rollout is good, etc. cetera. Yeah. Probably will be. I see this weekend, I've, I kind of said this about two months ago, a little over two months ago. So yeah, you did, place. actually. Guys, vaccine... Delay the second dose. Get out there. We I wanted to do this for the whole of March and into the, in, in, for the whole of April. We should be yeah. we should be we should be further ahead than we are. You put that. You wrote that actually in in January. The new, I wrote the end of January. I wrote it in the, uh, February. Yeah. February. Yeah. February. And I said, listen, guys, we should be ready to do this. Take a couple of weeks to do this. And I just said, I hope and pray somebody is doing this work now. I hope somewhere in the bowels of the Department of Health, there is some poor loan assistant principal, principal <laughs> officer who's been told to work on this policy. It appears that they've been told to work on it this week or last week. And um, we're going, okay, fair enough, better late than never. But guys, no. like we're still wasting six weeks. Why do we keep wasting six weeks? Why do we keep it? We're not two weeks behind the UK. We're not three weeks behind Northern Ireland. We're six to eight weeks behind them. We yeah. can catch up. We can catch up with them. As we'll charger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As, 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 <clears throat> Instead of waiting until the end of June, we could do this at the end of May. We could have done this in the middle of May. Um, yeah. And it's only they've listened to you, Derek. It's not. It's not. On, well, it's it? not. Well, it, 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 I know where they're going. It's a bit late. Because the problem is, they listen to me. You listen to everything I say. It's only, <laughs> it's only a certain amount of it's only ever going to get through. But coming back to the communications, the other point about yeah. it is, is, is the difference between communica political communications and government communications, and what what Simon Harris and Leo Varadkar and Baldwin are political communications. They're addressing a certain audience, a small yeah. section of the audience. Yeah. Government communications is about addressing everyone with the same message that everyone can can understand, and therefore, therefore, you're actually watching this been played at two speeds. Yeah. And where Fianna Fáil perhaps possibly is trying to do the government communications stuff, and Fine Gael is just doing straight 
political communications to its own people. Yeah. And think, guys, will you wake up? They're like a boy band with several members planning to go solo. Oh, that's it. You know, you know that. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's kind of like there's a year to go. There's two years to go. And <laughs> those two lads, they can they can't carry a song, and they have all the rhythm of you know both us three. We can do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um. No, I was going to, I, I can't, because I, can't, I was about to try, but I can't actually think of the names of anyone in Boys Zone. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to string as keen this one or whatever that one anyway, but I can't remember them. Anyway. Um, Derek, thank you very much. Great, no, great no, chat. No, no, no. And uh, sorry for being Paxmanian earlier with you. But... Thank you. And so hopefully see you next Monday. Definitely. Well, no problem at all. Cheers. Cheers.